Hello everyone, I'm Rishikesh Radhakrishnan. I'm a principal solution architect with Elastic, and you're watching this companion video for the blog, which talks about building RAG using Llama 3 open source and Elastic. Now, as you can see in this blog, we're looking at two different approaches to implementing RAG. Uh, one is using Elastic, Llama Index as the Genia LLM application development framework, then using Llama 3 that's running locally using Llama. The second one again uses Elastic, uh, but Langchain has a difference here in terms of the Genia LLM uh, based application development, then using ELSA, that's Elastic Learned Sparse Encoder, Llama 3 again, of course, running locally using Llama. Uh, the notebooks for this particular blog are available in this location. Please feel free to go to them. Uh, now, before I go ahead, a couple of things I want to cover is the Llama 3 itself. Now, Llama 3 is a part of the Llama family of autoregressive large language models that are launched by Meta. Uh, in fact, there are quite a few benchmarks that have been run against it, and the model evaluations with uh, close to about 150 benchmark datasets, that's a wide variety of languages and new human evaluations. Uh, these are the results of the benchmark when compared to some of the contemporary models. So as you can see, it performs very well compared to them. In fact, one of the differences uh, as compared to the blog is that we'll be looking at Llama 3.1. And if you look at the performance from Llama 3 to Llama 3.1 as well, there's a significant improvement there. So that's one of the differences. Now coming to the approach itself, uh, we're going to start looking at the prerequisites. To start with, we look at the data set. Now, if you look at the data set, it's a fictional organization policy document. It's already available for you in the JSON format. And this is what we're going to use. Of course, you can look at any other PDF document or anything. You'll just have to go through the pre-processing steps to extract the relevant content out of it. The next thing we need is Olama and Llama 3 running. Let's look at the steps to download Olama. Feel free to go to this particular URL and download the relevant installers or binaries for your specific uh, platform. Once you go ahead and follow the steps, you'll have Olama running. And post that is where you run the command to download, install, and run Llama 3 on your, on your particular machine. Now, on my machine that I've already downloaded, I'm going to show you the different models that I have. And this is the one that I'm going to be running. Let's run this now. Olama run. And as you can see, look at the size of the models. Uh, it does take time to download. And of course, in addition to that, when you start running it, the inference time, the time it takes to generate embeddings, that does depend on the amount of RAM, the GPU that's available on your machine. Now, let's look at the comparison between the output for a similar question that's posed to both Llama 3 and Llama 3.1. Now, you should see almost the same response, but because these are two different models, uh, though it's from the same family, you might see some differences, but that should be expected. So let's look at this. It seems like it's almost the same, a slight difference, but that should be expected, as I mentioned before. Now let's go ahead and start with the next part, which is going to be the Elasticsearch setup part of it, right? Now, please follow the instructions on this particular URL. As you can notice here, it allows you to sign up for a free trial, a 14-day trial, and you can either use that, or if you already have anything, feel free to use it. The steps are going to be to create a cloud deployment, pick up a cloud provider of your choice, a provision or create a deployment there. Once you have a deployment ready, follow these steps to essentially find your cloud ID and the Cloud ID and create an API key. These are the two things that we're going to use as part of the Jupyter Notebooks. So coming back here, we now have the prerequisites done. So we have Olama installed, Llama 3 running. Uh, we also have the Elastic Cloud deployment done, and we have the Cloud ID and the API key handy. So now go, let's go to the Jupyter Notebooks itself. So let's start with the first one, which is going to be RAG using Elastic and Llama 3 running on Olama. We'll be using Llama Index as the Genii LLM application development framework. So to begin with, start with installing the required dependencies. So let's go ahead and do this. And these packages are already installed on my machine, so it doesn't take a lot of time. But if you look at it, essentially you get some of the core packages, some of the embedding generation packages, all of the things that are relevant for the overall RAG process itself. So once that is done, let's import the relevant packages. Before that, let's capture the Cloud ID and API key that's going to be used subsequently. Let's prompt the user. Now, I already have that handy, and I'm going to feed it now. I'm going to get the cloud ready first, and next is the API key. So there you go. We have the cloud ready and the API key ready for us. Next, we're going to prepare the document for chunking and ingestion. So the, the way we're doing it is we're going to download that workplace document, policy document JSON file and process it by probably enhancing it with some metadata and then creating document objects that are required by the Llama index library. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. If you can notice here, this is the part where we're building a list of those documents, but also enhancing it by adding the metadata here. So let's go ahead and create that. 
So that's done. The next is the part where we define the Elasticsearch endpoint, uh, the ingest pipeline and Llama index for document processing. And we are going to be using Llama 3.1 for generating the embeddings. How do we, how we do that is over here. Uh, we are essentially defining uh, the Elasticsearch vector store here, the index where we're going to store the data, the vector representation of the content, the textual representation of the content, and of course, the cloud ID and API key before that we had captured before. Uh, the next is the Olama embedding. Now, this is the package using which we're going to interact with the Olama uh, installed in your machine and through which we'll go ahead and integrate with Llama 3.1 in terms of generating embeddings, in terms of completing the overall write process itself. So that there we have, we have the Elasticsearch defined, then we have the Olama embedding, which is going to use Llama 3.1 to generate the embeddings. And of course, the pipeline, which puts them all together, uh, this is the transformations part, which uses Llama Index's uh, sentence splitter to create chunk sizes of 5 and 12 and an overlap of 100. And of course, the vector store where we're going to ingest and store the data eventually once the process completes. So let's set that up. Now, once we've done that, let's execute the pipeline. This is the part where we're going to generate the embeddings using Llama tree and ingest that into Elasticsearch. Uh, this will be into a dense vector field, uh, which I'll show once the process completes, and the dimensions are going to be 4096. Now, this is what's available from Llama 3.1 by default. So here we have the documents that we prepared before, and also passing in the flag, which allows me to see the progress for the overall pipeline. Now, as I mentioned before, the overall time that it takes does depend on your platform capacity, on your local machine, the amount of RAM you have, the GPU, all those things do come into play in terms of the time required to be able to process the documents, being able to chunk them, being able to generate those embeddings. So this is what it's doing now. It's processed over 37% of my documents and it's generating the embeddings and it's going to ingest that into Elastic. So once this is done, let's go to our Elastic Switch console and see how that looks like. And I think it's almost done. So once this is done, all right, there you go. It's completed the overall processing. And this is the embeddings that are generated post the processing. Let's go and look at how it shows up in our, in our, in our index. This is the workplace index that we created. And as you can see, this is the content vector, which is the dense vector type and the dimensions being 4096. Let's also look at the, the data that we have here that we ingested. This is the text representation of the data. And this is the vector representation for the same data. So there we have it. We have processed the document. We ingested the data into Elasticsearch, and we also generated the embeddings. And the embeddings are stored in the dense vector, the field that we have before. So let's go back to the overall RAG process itself. Now, before I go ahead, if you look at the overall RAG process itself, what does it stand for? It's retrieval augmented generation. So in a very simplest form, it's essentially you get the question posed by your end user. You use that to search the most contextually relevant response to that particular question from your underlying uh, business data using the vector database, Elastic. And then you put them together, the Google's original question and the contextually relevant response from the vector database, and you present that to the generative AI or the LLM. So the LLM is now bounded or grounded with the data that you have, the, the contextually relevant business data that's there. And then you can use the Gen AI to act using that particular data. So reducing the likelihood of hallucination there. So that's how you use the overall RAG process to get the right answer with your contextually relevant data from your business documents or your business data. So that's the overall process behind. And let's see how that comes together when you look at the code itself. So this is the part where we define the embedding model, which again we defined before. Then we have the local LLM, which is Olama, which is essentially Olama running here with the model Llama 3.1. Let's execute that. And this is where it all comes together. We define the vector store. This is the Elasticsearch that we defined before, the query engine, and the original question from the user, which is what we use to query the underlying vector database. Then use the contextually relevant response along with the user's original question and pass it to the LLM, which is Llama 3.1 here to act upon it. Right, to get you the right answer. So let's go ahead and execute this. The inference time uh, does depend a lot on the amount of uh, resources that you have, the, the GPU, the RAM, and everything over here. So let's see the response that we get from here. So there you go. It's taken about uh, 19 odd seconds to be able to search the online 
vector database Elasticsearch to get the contextually relevant response and then send the overall question and the response to Lama 3.1 to help answer your question, get you the right response to your question. So this is what we get. So what we did so far is look at the first implementation, implementing RAG using Elastic, uh, Lama 3 running locally using the Lama, and Lama index as the Jenny Adelin application framework. So let's go to the second approach now. Now over here, it's uh, almost the same one, except for the state difference that we're going to use LangChain intro instead of uh, Lama index, and we're going to use ELSA. Elastic is Elastic Learned Sparse Encoder. It's a sparse model. It's a retrieval model trained by Elastic to be able to do semantic search better. So you get uh, better contextually relevant responses to your questions, right? It, it's a sparse model. And uh, one of the features is that it works very well for your out of domain data. You don't have to train it on your uh, specific data as such. So let's see how this all comes together here. Again, we have done the prerequisites. We have the Elastic Cloud details and all those other Cloud ID and API key that we already captured. Let's go ahead and start with the package, the dependencies that we need. So here we have installed the required dependencies. Uh, the packages over here. We're going to now prompt the user for the Cloud ID and API key. Let's go ahead and provide them. When we add the Cloud ID first, and then the API key. And I have that ready now. Now, the other difference here is that we're going to, of course, prepare the documents for chunking and ingestion, but we are already doing that outside the cluster. So this is the part where we're going to download that same policy document, but we're going to do the splitting outside here, not as part of the ingest pipeline as we did in the Lama index method. Here, we're going to do the splitting over here using the recursive character text splitter from Langchain. Uh, this again is going to split the documents at 512 characters with an overlap of 256 characters. This, of course, can be configured based on your specific requirement. So let's go ahead and execute this. And this is ready for us now. Now, one of the significant differences here is that uh, this particular approach creates an ingest pipeline with an Elasticsearch. And it refers to the ELSA model that we downloaded into our Elasticsearch cluster. Let's, let me show you how that looks like. So if I go to my console and go ahead and go to my machine learning location tab here. So I went to the wrong one go to the machine learning tab and look at the trained models. This is where you have the ability to download that model and deploy it. And this is the model ID that we are referring to, right? So let's go back to my dev console and come back to my notebook. So this is a sparse vector strategy that we're going to use. And over here, we define the cloud ID and the API key, of course, and the index where we're going to store the data. And the sparse vector strategy is going to refer to this model. So what this does is allows you to use this model that's already downloaded, creates an ingest pipeline, which essentially processes the document as it comes in, right? So let's go ahead and execute this and add the documents here. Now, as I said here, we do not use any embedding function here. And this is because the tokens are in for an index time. And these are all index time as well as a query time. And it doesn't have to go externally to say your Lama 3.1 and generate the embeddings or uh, during query time as well again go and generate the embeddings again as part from Lama 3.1. It is all done at runtime or at index time using v 2 itself. And this is the model that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and execute this. And it's gone ahead and added documents. Let's look at how this shows up here. So this is how the, the index shows up. As you can see, this is a mapping that's created by our, our package here, that's the West Fars vector strategy. This is the mapping that's created by that specific package. And as you can see, it also provides you that default pipeline. Let's also look at the pipeline, how it shows up. This is the pipeline that I was referring to back in the index mapping. So yeah, let's go back to our dev console and look at how the data shows up and again, so as you can see, this is the sparse vector representation for the data. And this is a text equivalent of the data. So there we have, we have indexed the data, we have uh, generated the embeddings and it's all available in our index. Let's go ahead and put them all together to complete the overall RAG implementation. Uh, as, as again, we're gonna define access to Llama. We're gonna import the package, the Llama package and refer to the Llama 3.1 that's already running here. And now we're gonna do semantic search using Elasticsearch ELSA v2 and use Lama 3 as the LLM to be able to get the right answer with the data that we are fetching using ELSA v2. So this is how it all comes in together. 
this is to help a function that we created to help format the documents. Uh, but otherwise, this is how it all comes in together. The retriever, which retrieves data based on the question that you have, the template where we put them all together, the context and the question, and which is what is sent to the LLM to help us get the right answer. So let's execute this and see what we get as a response. So there you go. This is the response that we got. Uh, essentially, the process has been the same that we covered here. You have your user's question that's essentially used to search the most relevant response from your underlying business data using Elastic as a vector source. Uh, you use the response that we got along with the question to put, to send it to your generative AI to help get you the right answer based on the contextually relevant data that you fetch from your online data. This is the overall process that we implemented, uh, and we followed two different methods. One was using Llama Index and Llama 3 and Elastic. The second one used NSV2 and Langchain and Elastic, of course, and Llama 3 as the LLM there. Uh, so overall, the process is the same. We, pull, we get the user's question. Uh, we search the underlying business data using Elastic to get you the most relevant response. We put that together and send it to your large language model to get the right answer. So there you go. We cover two different approaches to implementing RAG. Uh, feel free to use the Jupyter Notebooks to be able to run them in your environment as well. And feel free to use any different data set as well. All right, thank you so much.